Hello again, and welcome to another Time Sticking YouTube video. Today we're going to be looking at a wristwatch that took the bull by the horns, so stick with us through this intro. That's right, today we're going to be talking about the Omega Bullhead Seamaster Chronograph that was released in 1969. This particular model came out at a very, very lucrative time for the Omega brand. Indeed, in 1969, their Speedmaster Professional was on Buzz Aldrin's wrist during the first moonwalk. Their Electro Quartz watch was first production on the first ever Swiss quartz movement, the Beta 21. And in 1969, Omega evolved their 27 chrono movement into the Caliber 930. This updated hand-wound chronograph slash date movement was featured on two big Seamaster releases, the DeVille and the ever unique Bullhead model. The prior of these two watches has a much more slim and traditional look, with its pressers and crown on the right side of the round case. Omega's Bullhead, however, is a much more non-conventional piece that had plenty of contemporary flair upon its 69 release. Receiving its nickname from featuring the crown and pressers at 12 o'clock, its look has a no BS classic design. As a matter of fact, the Omega Seamaster Chrono Bullhead serves up a pretty awesome retro snapshot. Tapering from top to bottom on the case design, in terms of case thickness, this watch sits higher on the wrist at the 12 position. At that same position, on the dial, there's a Pepsi colored subdial amidst an otherwise brown backdrop. That's right. The watch dial's color palette does include red, blue, brown, and black altogether, which may seem a little bit tacky by today's standards, but was par for the course for men's sportswear at the time. Speaking of being sporty, the hash marks for the chronograph on this piece take on a checkered look. Generally, bullhead style designs from this time kept racing stopwatches in mind. Omega was no exception in leaning into that aspect of the style, adding their own racetrack flavor to the stopwatch markings. With an oblong, four-angled case designed around an otherwise round dial, the Omega Bullhead almost looks like a piece of avant-garde architecture compared to more traditional shapes. This is an attractive aspect of the Bullhead style. Its shape breaks from traditional design, giving it a commanding presence, as long as you have a wrist that fits its size. Holding things on the wrist, the band itself is shaped to accommodate the vertically placed crowns and pressers. The six o'clock crown, sitting polar opposite to the bull's head, was designed to manipulate the interior bezel to dial in greater chronograph accuracy. This crown gets its own slot cut out in the band, while the date and time manipulating top crown rests against the top half of the leather strap. Even though the 1969 Omega Bullhead is an iconic piece, other watchmakers were making this style of watch in the 1970s. Some contemporary companies even used the Caliber 930 movement in their wrist watches. This includes Swiss watchmakers Lemania, Tissot, and Bucure. Lemania made a non-date variant of the Caliber 930, and Tissot made one with a composite material case. Bullhead mechanical watches were coming out of Japan at this time as well, from brands like Citizen and Seiko. More recently, a Model 8110A Citizen Bullhead was featured in the Quentin Tarantino film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This gold-plated Citizen automatic shines as a fitting retro style for the retro-centric piece of filmmaking. In terms of Omega's 1969 Seamaster release, their Caliber 930 movement was pretty short-lived. Yes, the only thing that really held back the 1969 Omega Bullhead, in terms of continued production, was the manual wind aspect of its design. The Caliber 930 movement lasted just one year in Omega's Bullhead watch. As it stood, the movement was considered anachronistic, even in the late 1960s. However, the factors that led to the 1969 Omega Bullhead leaving production have now added value to it in recent years. With such a limited release, this Omega Seamaster watch has become arguably the most collectible bullhead from its time. Its near-exclusive movement build makes it worth a solid chunk of change. Even the 2013 reissue of this piece sells online for thousands of dollars. Unlike the original 1969 release, though, the 2013 Bullhead, or Seamaster Chrono, runs on an automatic mechanical, instead of a manual wind movement. Though multiple watch companies were using the Bullhead style for sports style watch lines, Omega's 1969 Bullhead remained supremely popular for retro watch fans. Bullhead watches themselves were often limited releases, giving them an allure all their own. So if you really dig this original 1969 Omega Seamaster, you can still find some online, although they tend to be pretty expensive. 
Otherwise, bullhead watches are fairly easy to find from other watch brands, ranging from hundreds to thousands of bucks, depending on your personal taste and the rarity of the piece. Hello, and thanks for watching our YouTube video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and you can find similar videos right here. For more new and interesting content from Time Sticking on our channel, please subscribe at the link here. And for more information about wristwatch repair and watch maintenance generally, you can find us at timesticking.com. Thanks so much and have a great day.